the next question is about uh, the ethics of wealth hoarding. Um, and uh, they, they say, you know, don't, might be touchy, don't want you to be labeled as a Marxist. Um, so I thought that was funny. Uh, yeah, so is it ethical for some, you know, some small sliver of society to have enormous amounts of wealth? More wealth than most of you watching could ever accumulate in a thousand lifetimes um, of, you know, working at a regular job. I don't know if I have a particular answer to this. I can talk in generalities. I won't talk about myself personally. Um, well, I guess, you know, maybe that's what you want, but it's such, such a subjective thing. There is a concept called the Gini coefficient. I believe it's spelled G-I-N-I, -I, which is just a way of calculating wealth in a society, or sorry, wealth inequality in a society. So um, on one spectrum, and it doesn't matter what it is. Um, I, I believe it's on a scale of zero to one. It does, doesn't really matter. On one side of the, when you run this calculation, uh, you have perfect, you know, utopian, well, dystopian, uh, communism, where the wealth is spread completely evenly across society, okay? And on the other hand, you have complete uh, wealth inequality, where the rich have, you know, almost all of the wealth and the poor very little. Now, most countries are somewhere in the range in the middle there. Um, and where exactly you fall sort of depends on where you're at. So in the United States, for example, uh, you know, we have a little more wealth inequality than, say, a Sweden, um, but certainly Sweden has more wealth inequality than, say, you know, a, a Bolshevik revolution early times. Uh, so, so there are, you know, there, there's, you're on a spectrum somewhere. What I've heard is that um, there is a Goldilocks zone for optimum economic growth and prosperity that is somewhere in the middle of here. If you have, if you have too little wealth inequality, um, let's say you have a good idea. G good ideas need capital. They need um, people to be able to invest. Like, uh, think of like the best things in society that we create, like art, <laughs> you know? Um, beautiful buildings, uh, companies, technology. Like these things require bubbles of wealth. Um, in order to effectively run. There is some notion, like imagine that you needed to make hot pockets, okay? Like if each individual at their home was working on making a hot pocket, it would be pretty inefficient. It is much more efficient to have a big factory stamping out hot pockets. Um, and whether, you know, maybe efficiency shouldn't be the be all end all, uh, that's a good ethical question. But at least let's just, let's just concede the point that having, you know, if you collect wealth together to accomplish a goal, you can be more effective because of scale, right? The, the more we scale, the more efficient we can be at manufacturing something or building roads or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a, if, if society doesn't have enough wealth inequality, if it's too equal, uh, you're missing out on some of those uh, those opportunities for, to let good ideas really uh, be invested in and take hold and spring and go forth. Um, e even if it's, hey, let's, let's take it away from like, you know, roads and stuff, like, like a, an awesome movie, right? Like it's gonna be a little better if that movie can get more than a home budget to, you know, have special effects and have a good writing ta team and get good actors. And you're gonna be able to create a more a better, more awesome thing if there's a little more money around to be invested. On the flip side, okay, if you have too much wealth inequality, right, where the, they're, they're, you have the haves and the have nots, um, then, then those who really don't have anything are not able to exert their full, full human potential and not even close. And so you're leaving all that on the table. So I live in Chicago. Um, I did some volunteer work with a local school uh, for a number of months. It, the school that I worked on, you know, the graduation rate was about 60%. So almost half of the kids who start as a freshman do not graduate high school. And the reality is, is that those who probably drop out, um, that you are, there's a huge amount of human potential through in ide uh, ideas, innovation, just being competent in the world, 
um, and you know, b- being good at your job, whatever that job is. Like, there's all this um, being, you know, there's there's just this huge amount of human capital that uh, society is losing out on uh, because uh, there's not enough resources in these communities to provide the stability um, and I don't know opportunities um, for a lot of these kids to be able to graduate high school. Um, so you're losing out on that as well if you have too much wealth inequality. And that hurts your society, and it can cause civil unrest, which is also bad for economic growth, you know, if that's your be-all, end-all. So even if we're just taking the 100% capitalist, like, le- or like, ec- I guess I'll say economics perspective of what's best for an economy, you want that Goldilocks zone. You, do, you need to have a, some inequality, but too much is, you know, is bad too. So what's, what's important to me is not whether there are people who are rich and people who are poor, because I think almost any society, that, that's just going to happen. Um, that's, that's a externality of capitalism. Like, that, sorry, like, wealth accumulates. The question is, um, how much is it accumulating? And is it causing negative effects? Um, so that, that's, and that's up to the you, that's up to the society, the ethics of the people around you. Uh, if you're in Sweden, right, they're further back. They're saying, hey, there are rich people in Sweden and they live a very comfortable lifestyle, but like, it's much harder to be very rich in Sweden. We're going to tax more. We're going to distribute the wealth more. We're going to try and make sure that the bottom rung of society is raised, that they can all have the opportunity of a good education, the opportunity of a good job. So having, you know, it doesn't mean everyone necessarily will do that, but everyone should have the opportunity. Whereas in the United States, uh, certainly we, we are more of a, well, you know, anyone can can do it if you want. We never said it was easy, but you know, you could, if you wanted to, um, become rich and very rich. So that's at least the you know, ideals of the American dream. So I, again, I'm not gonna personally say where on the genie coefficient spectrum I'm on. Um, that's all up for to you guys to guess. I, I, I will say there's we're probably getting to the point in, in the United States where um, we're a little too high on the inequality scale. Uh, I think uh, if you look at um, American history, we've been most productive sort of in that 50s, 60s, 70s, when actually uh, wealth inequality was pretty low um, relative to the, you know, the America in the 1920s with the robber barons and then America today uh, with the very, very uh, sort of wealthy class that we have. So, you know, I, I guess I, I think America is getting up there. Um, in terms of the Gini coefficient and the world as well. Uh, you're seeing the same thing in China and Mexico and Brazil. And there are a lot of countries um, where you're seeing a stratification where people at the top are accumulating more wealth um, than those at the bottom. So these things kind of come and go in pendulums. Um, and throughout my lifetime, the pendulum has been swinging one direction. Uh, I, I would imagine that in the coming 20, 30, 40 years, uh, it starts swinging back that other direction um, because societies are pretty good at figuring that balance out. Um, I think I think you can kind of feel it uh, in a society. So I've, I've spoken way too much uh, about this, but <laughs> it's a really complicated topic. So there you go. Those are just some of the thoughts about uh, the ethics of, of uh, and I guess ec- economics of wealth uh, uh, accumulation.